We've heard over recent years the importance of NFE to 5G and vice versa, 5G to NFE. Um, does the success of 5G commercial success also depend on a successful introduction of cloud native technologies? Because the, the 5G journey has only just started, we've got another 10 years here. Is, is this just as important to 5G as NFE? <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you look at the, the 5G core network functions, they are very, very simple. So they are not too much complicated, and you cannot compare to the to the complexity of uh, of a VNF. So there is uh, there has been a decision in the industry to go to again to something that can be really distributed in terms of uh, functionality in the in the network. And uh, this is exactly to achieve the type of uh, agility that, and dynamicity that the cloud native as a software technology will then, uh, will then provide. So definitely, yes, because if we look there, it doesn't make sense with such a simple network function to stay on, uh, uh, you know, on OpenStack or, or on VMware, right? We need to move on container exactly for that, uh, for that reason, right? Is there an urgency to, to move to cloud native? And we, we have heard a, a few telcos talk recently about we've been stuck in virtualization too long and we need to keep moving. Do we, do we, are, we, are we being pushed along by the trough of disillusionment of NFE perhaps or, or just the general market hype that we, we see around cloud native? I mean, what we see at the moment um, is um, VNF has been around for, for a while now, and they haven't really taken off. And if you talk to, to well, if I talk to our customers, multinational corporations, talk to analysts like Gartner, then they'll, they'll say the same thing. There are no global deployments of service chain VNFs at scale anywhere. But what we see at the moment is the, the rise of a couple of things. Um, first of which is some um, very commercially attractive uh, price points for new CPE about to come on the market. Um, commercially attractive and also high performing. And secondly, the rise of industrial IoT as a use case for key customers in the manufacturing, mining, oil and gas sectors, which I think is really going to drive forward the UCP adoption. So, you know, we see this taking off now. I might argue that I disagree that there aren't large-scale deployments of service chains at scale, but that could be a conversation for another day. Um, but I, I also think that um, th there's a place for NFVs today in the services that are available today. Um, but I do believe or have an, a point of view that with mobile edge computing, cloud native is the way to start um, because most of the functions we will deploy in the mech uh, will by default be cloud native because they are different types of workloads than we will deploy in current universal CPE applications today yeah. uh, because their purpose and their function is going to be different in mobile edge computing. And so they could start with a cloud native journey to begin with um, and could be consumed by customers and the applications that are built on that stack in a cloud native fashion. The edge is, a, is the perfect example. So whatever is running at the edge has a diff, completely different economy if it is a cloud native compared to a virtualized uh, network function. And considering how important is the space, the consumption of these things are so important at the edge, I think that that's, that's the perfect example on where, you know, the, the, the the business and the technology need are driving the innovation towards, uh, towards cloud native. And can be done today, yeah? because on Mac we have very good uh, example of things that can be deployed now that are exactly in this direction. Yeah? I agree. Yeah, I completely agree. I think to truly realize the transformative promise of 5G, Mac, and edge computing, um, you also have to open up that ecosystem to the developer community. And the developer community, the, the largest developer community is the cloud developers. And they understand cloud native. They understand microservices. They understand you know, the programming paradigms that they've been exposed to in the cloud. And, and that is you know, the, the 5G and Edge can thrive if we open up to that developer community. Alexis, let's pick up on, on, on that. On, we, we, we've gone around the subject of ecosystem. Let's, let's, let's really tackle it full on now. Um, 
How, how do you, as a CSP, select the right ecosystem? It seems to be an evolving and a, and a changing dynamic. Are, are, there, are there differences? Is a new ecosystem required? So coming back to your previous question, we started two years ago in the hype, mm -hmm. thinking that everything can be done uh, in virtualized world. And by default, we decided to do everything virtualized for the new things obsolescence capacity, and we discovered that the journey was not so easy. And uh, after one year, we decided to stop this uh, way to do the, th the things. And to come back to the basic, it's what are the benefits, uh, and to define and to virtualize only what is needed for business or for the operational uh, savings. And at the end, we find that it exists, this world where we can provide new services, in B2B market and uh, also for the SME market, where the automation is key to provide without human uh, intervention or human configurations for this SME market. And for us, it's a way also to modify the way we work, as mentioned before, in order to be focused for the business. So it's a very it's lower than before, than the expectation at the beginning. But now the basics are good. Uh, we are focusing the business, and it moves also network people to the business, which we were quite not quite far in, from the network and the business. And now, through this new technology, we are closer. And how do you work with partners? How do you work with the, with the ecosystem? So the partners today, it's quite difficult to, to, to select a partner based on the reality of what is the cloud native today, because there is not a native cloud today. So it's more relationship with a partner, to make sure that they are willing to do what we want, to work together in this ecosystem, and it's more to trust, more than a reality of an equation that you select someone based on a ranking. More the ranking is the trust with the vendors, with the ecosystem that is not vendors anymore, our partners to co-design, to work together, uh, to fulfill the requirements to the customer. Vicky, you, are you seeing different requirements when you, when you look at, at partners? Well, you know, uh, we recently hosted something called the 5G Challenge. It was sort of like a shark tank mm. where we brought uh, companies in to compete for a million dollars mm. in funding. And so a lot of these were new companies. Some of them were companies with two employees. Some had, you know, a few hundred. Um, but they were asked to bring new ideas to the table that would leverage the mech in 5G specifically. Um, and, you know, we were so going through the, the rounds of, of analysis, but it was interesting that people brought, you know, the kinds of applications they brought to us that would be deployed at the edge and in the mech. All of these were cloud native. Mm. All of those uh, often leveraged the fact that, you know, by moving the functions or moving the, the workloads onto the mech, you know, they could improve battery life of the devices or they, they had robots, they had all kinds of things. But the interesting thing was it, we were sort of changing where the economics happened because by improving the um, efficiency and the latency of the device that the, the, some of these companies, they were really just moving the problem from one place to another. So from their individual you know, compute that they needed in the processors in their devices to the mech. And so I think, but they were still cloud native apps, but it sort of changes the game too. Um, but we're seeing initial ones where these are companies we've never even heard of before, right? That are bringing innovative new ideas to the table that are, be, that are cloud native. And I think that's where a lot of the excitement in the, indus in the industry is. So it's not necessarily that uh, we wouldn't partner, but I think the partners are not the traditional partners that we might have, all, all of us might have, you know, um, I'd like to find a better word than been in bed with, mm. but been in bed with in the past. <laughs> I was going to say been in a relationship with, but that's just uh, yeah, as bad. Yeah, yeah, that would have been better. <laughs> Aidan, yeah, so I, I think just build, building on that, um, if, we, if we go back to some comments I was making earlier about now customers want to consume in a more cloud-like way, then they're looking to pay telcos in a different kind of way as well. So therefore, a telco supplier selection is going to look at how you can back off your commercial model with your customer back down our supplier chain. So if a customer is pay now moving away from connection and rental to purely paying on an as-you-go basis, then that's how I want to play my suppliers and my, my vendor partners too. So we're looking for, for vendor partners that will actually work on the new commercial model, as well as being agile and flexible. Um, so yeah. 
Fine. His Did word uh, y- sounds like music to me, so yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I thought they might. So my CEO yeah. decided to move the entire portfolio in a consumption-based model by 2022, right? So um, we share this, uh, this view. We, we believe that um, a lot of the technology is going to be more and more perceived as a service by whoever is using, uh, using that. So there can be... <clears throat> A telco service, or, or can be, you know, even uh, some IT computer or storage, whatever. At the end of the day, uh, everybody goes towards, uh, you know, experiencing a service and experiencing a service according to the to the to the expectation. So I fully agree, but I think is even more more deep the problem than just that, because this is an industry that is used to deal with uh, always the same vendors and trying to get a solution from the same vendors. And these vendors are used to work according to standards. So, you know, the, the, the entire culture and the entire process is, uh, is not applicable to the, to, the, to the new world. The new world is going to be completely different. So the real challenge for the, for the industry is to understand if we want to continue to do the same things with the same people in the same way, and if this happens, then probably will be the end of this industry, or the industry will be cornered to provide just, just connectivity, exactly because the demand is going in a completely opposite, uh, opposite direction. Mm-hmm. So I think it's a, there are many ways to start creating a different ecosystem, but uh, what has been just mentioned in terms to stimulate new ideas, to bring in new companies that have a different type of business model in mind mm-hmm. as well is probably a good, uh, a good start, right? I think uh, also, in addition to what uh, our other panelists said, uh, there, there are layers of ecosystem that we need to likely foster in different ways. Uh, there's still kind of the, the foundational or horizontal ecosystem, the uh, network function vendors or the orchestrators and others that you have to uh, probably influence and foster to, to the cloud native way. Um, there are application vendors that are likely, more likely to move to cloud native much faster. Uh, but as you look at where we're starting to see some of the initial traction for 5G and Edge, which is things like industrial IoT, uh, the vertical ecosystem is also very unique. So when we sat down with some of our industrial teams to say, hey, who are the partners you are working with, working that supply chain backwards, it's a completely different set of you know, white box vendors, completely different set of um, real-time deterministic software providers, uh, integrators. So there's a different ecosystem that some of us who've been in networking or telco uh, are new to. So you're going to see unique vertical ecosystems across you know, a number of these verticals, the retail one is going to be completely different from industrial, it's going to be completely different from healthcare and smart cities and so forth. So, um, you know, we're, we're going to have to deal with multiple layers of ecosystem for all of this to come together to say, hey, I'm able to deploy these services in this vertical and actually derive revenue that comes through the entire supply chain.